So my name is Simon Clark, and uh, my PhD was in stratospheric dynamics. There was a specific moment when we got the results through um, about this non-linearity that appeared in the data that I derived the equations for, set up the whole experiment, written the code, done the run, and it came through, and it was like this euphoric moment of this is something that no one else has seen before. This is, I think, really, really cool. And then taking it to academics. And then I remember my Viva, one of my examiners saying, huh, that's, that's pretty cool, actually. And that experience of having a, your, your baby and it being new knowledge, I think, was just really satisfying. So since graduating, I now work full time as a science communicator. So I'm self-employed uh, and mostly what that means is I have a YouTube channel where I do videos about science, uh, a lot of stuff to do with my thesis and my area, but also things like books. Um, I grew my channel a lot when I was doing my PhD, making video blogs about the experience. And so I do a couple of those. But then I also do uh, video work on commission. Uh, I also uh, do some TV work and presenting uh, and some live streaming. So it's lots of different things that kind of fall under this umbrella of science communication, but working for myself. I realise that I'm kind of an unconventional um, career for somebody doing a PhD, and I was very, very academic all the way through uh, up until I finished. Um, but I think it's important to remember that not everybody who does a PhD then goes on to become an academic. I think it's, they showed us a, like a Sankey diagram when we first started at, at, the, um, uh, at the PhD, and it's something like, one and a half percent of people that start grad school end up as a professor. Like people leave academia at various stages, whether it's after the PhD or after postdoc or lectureship, to go to industry or just to completely change careers. So doing a PhD on the surface may not have helped become sort of a, a YouTuber and doing science communication, but um, as I said before, the project management is a really big help. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's taking a, a big idea, and some of the projects I've worked on have taken months from conception to release. Um, uh, they've been really mammoth tasks, and I know that doing my thesis really helped put everything in perspective and show me how a workflow works. I think during the PhD, I had to get very good at managing my own time and I had to get good at being my own boss, basically, and motivating myself. Um, and actually, it's not so much motivation as I think discipline. I think you have to be disciplined to turn up every day because uh, motivation just comes and goes. And I think when you work for yourself, you have to be disciplined with it and you have to turn up and you know, work at the coalface basically, even if you don't really feel like it. And technically I work from home, so I could just play on my Switch all day. Um, but I, you know, I think something that the PhD taught me was that, yeah, you have to be your own boss. Uh, and also a, a bunch of other soft skills like, for example, yeah, project management, for example, setting you know, a deadline for a project, breaking it down into smaller goals. Um, I think it just makes you a lot more efficient at getting stuff in general done. So it doesn't necessarily mean science, but projects in general. Talk to your supervisor back and forth look after your mental health and use some kind of project management software. There's lots of free stuff out there. If I had to pick three words to summarize the PhD, I think they would be challenging, coding, and caffeine. Three Cs, why not? <laughs>